Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today I am going to be using the wheel to help me decide which Genshin characters that I'm going to be drawing today, as I always find the numbers generator to never be truly random. I am going to be using an app called Endless Paper instead of using Procreate or Ibis Paint today. And I kind of wanted to give the Infinite Zoom art challenge a go. And I believe this was kind of more popular a while back, but I've never tried this before or tried this app before. So I'm going to give you guys kind of like a quick demonstration on the capability and kind of its gimmick of this particular app. So this is a normal canvas. But let me skip to the end so you can kind of go in reverse of what I want to show you. So now we have this little round dude um, with a flag that says end. And I'm going to basically zoom out and show you guys what this little guy is in. So he's kind of in Hansuke's paw and Hansuke's on some clouds, which happens to be inside the sprout of this girl. And this girl is kind of stuck on top of this guy's scalp. And this guy's riding a train. Um, here's the train. And then as we zoom out, you can see that this was actually settled right into the A of the word canvas. So for this app, you can basically zoom in and out infinitely. So I'm going to be doing the Genshin random drawings based on this whatever the wheel chooses, which is Shungling. So we're going to start with Shungling right now. And then as we move along and do other characters, I will basically continue to zoom into different parts and kind of hide a character in a certain part of the drawing that's already been made. Hopefully that all makes sense. If it doesn't, I'll put some text on the screen, but I think it becomes a little bit more straightforward as you watch um, what I'm going to be doing for the next few minutes. So I don't really remember when this became like a very popular trend or a challenge or whenever people were starting to use this particular app, but I remember seeing it on Twitter a couple of times, but also a YouTube channel called Natsume Sanchi, which is a kind of like an art channel run by a couple who do kind of very amazing art and I love watching their stuff. They are a Japanese channel, but I do enjoy watching their stuff. They also have English subtitles and stuff. So I'll make sure to link their stuff down below if you're interested and I'll link the video of their version because it's very fascinating to see, especially um, because they have very different styles, but they're very professional looking artwork. So I love watching their stuff and I feel like the infinite zoom art challenge was very well done because it was kind of swapping between two different people, which I find very cool. So for the sketching portion, we are going to be sketching out Shangling first as the wheel has chosen Shangling. So I'm using the wheel this time and probably in the future as well, just because I do find it a little bit more random compared to the number generators that I find online. And I've been using the wheel for um, my flower studies as well, just because I didn't want to do flowers based on I guess like whatever is my favorite or whatever flowers that were done alphabetical order. So. I wanted to do it via the wheel and I really haven't used the wheel too too much other than that so I decided to shove in all the Genshin characters um, in the order that I usually have them and let the wheel choose for me just because it's a little bit easier. So for the sketching, I am using... I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a pencil or a pen or what have you but uh, it's basically has tapering but not exactly pen pressure per se so it does give a little bit more of that kind of fine liner look um which isn't like too hard to kind of adjust to and it does allow you to have two layers which i've seen people utilize to kind of color underneath their sketch or their line work but a lot of people i've also seen that have done this particular trend on, in this app that are drawing like directly in this app are able to just work in black and white and kind of go really detailed. It feels like I said more like a fine liner but you can use the second layer to definitely put in kind of like marker washes or whatever you want to do. I'm going to be doing for the first few kind of more limited color palettes but you'll see a little bit later that I try to match the colors a little bit more closely to the characters. I kind of wish I stuck with the limited color palettes just because I think it looks a little bit cuter and a little bit kind of more neat rather than me having such I don't know, a stark amount of white space for the characters. I just think if I stuck with the maybe two to three color palette, it would have looked a little bit more cohesive for each of the characters, but you know, that's kind of okay. 
So for Shengling, I did do the peach in the blue. We are already going ahead and rolling our new character, which is Goro. So I've drawn Goro a lot in the past, so it's not going to be too difficult to draw him. I'm also going to zoom in and place him inside somewhere in Shengling's little hair clip. So I'm going ahead and choosing an area that's still kind of like light. And the thing about this app is that the size of your brush will definitely depend or like the size of your brush will remain the same no matter what. So if you zoom in, your brush will become, or at least seems like it's becoming thicker compared to your lines that are done at, let's say, 100%. But if you zoom out, they, feel, they probably feel a little bit thinner because you're zooming out. So the brush feels like it's, um, I don't know, just less big compared to a larger canvas. So I'm kind of using that to my ability to zoom in and out to kind of adjust the thickness and kind of like play around with pushing some of the values as much as I can. Like I mentioned, the brush doesn't really have like pressure sensitivity. It does have tapering, so you're able to... I believe this is supposed to be meant for like diagrams and note taking and all of that. So it's not necessary to need kind of like the pressure sensitivity. I also believe it's mostly used with a stylus or particularly, I think it only can be used with a stylus. So do be wary and do your research if you do plan to purchase this app for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, I actually had a lot of fun playing around in here and because I've been kind of playing around with more inking traditionally, I kind of felt a little bit less lost when I was sketching with the current brush that I was using for the sketching. But the first three I feel like were still very much like warm ups because I stuck with more or less like headshots, not very adventurous poses or anything like that. I wanted to keep things simple. So for Goro, I went with more of a brown and then this kind of turquoise color for his color scheme. We are rolling our next character, which happens to be... Doo -doo -doo -doo. This wheel's really slow. I should really change the time on it. But we are drawing Klee. So because I struggled so much with Klee's drawing, I am actually going to be fast forwarding it. I'm sorry if this is going to go by super fast. I had too many issues with it. Um, one... I, I feel like I just don't do ju like Klee cl justice in any sort of my styles and stuff. So maybe one day I'll do a proper artwork for her so I can have a little bit of redemption. I also accidentally drew on the wrong layer for the first sketch. And at this point, I'm also still drawing on the wrong layer, I believe. So I won't notice for quite a while until actually... I think right around here is when I noticed that I was drawing on the wrong layer so that... I kind of needed to switch it up, but when I start to color in Klee, I kind of run into the issue of that my color was also painting over some of my lines. And then later on, I find that the teal color is very distracting for Klee. And I kind of wish that there was a little bit more of a color assortment that I could play around with to get more of a subtle color shift instead of these kind of brighter colors. In like the app itself, you can have like six preset colors and there's like a a lot of colors that they have on a wheel that you can kind of choose from but a lot of them it, it has like a nice range but for me i do like subtle colors a little bit more which is why i feel like i was kind of struggling a little bit here the the kind of color palettes that tend to be a little bit more out there and they don't have like let's say a more neutral feeling skin tone or let's say a more like white or a black, I feel like I struggle a little bit. So maybe in the future, I would like to tackle doing some color palette challenges where I will have to either draw a character that's already pre-existing with a specific color palette and kind of make it work with the mid-tones, the kind of darker and the lighter tones of the color palette. I think it could be kind of interesting and it'll allow me to push myself to be a little bit more creative when it comes to coloring and just the use of values and stuff because you can see here this is this is struggling really hard. I do apologize to anyone who really likes Klee. I don't think I ever do her justice because like I said in the future I would like to draw her and maybe do a finished artwork of her because I do find her super super cute and I really do love her character. It's just I find her a little bit hard to draw. 
So, uh, yeah, I didn't really like how the blue was looking either. So later on, I'm going to fill in her skin. And then I was adding a little bit more of darker lines just because I wanted everything to pop a little bit more since the colors are a little bit too punchy for my taste. Um, and you can see me struggling to fill in the skin tone because this is where I realized that there were more areas that I forgot that was on the first layer rather than on my bottom layer, which is causing me to have a lot of places to need to be redrawn. But this is kind of where I settled with um, for Klee. And yeah, it's not it's not the greatest, but I feel like we should just move on to another area. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on her hat instead of the eyes again. And I'm going to pick a white space because I feel the most comfortable drawing on it. So I forgot to film the portion where I had the wheel, but the next person to my surprise is actually Lynette, which is one of the newer characters from Fontaine. So I'm going to be drawing her and I decided that I wanted to draw more of a kind of like waist up pose. I feel like Shangling was a warm up, Goro was definitely a warm up, but very much in my comfort zone. Klee kind of threw me into a loop and I wanted to draw something a little bit prettier, if that makes sense. So I wanted to draw something a little bit more elegant, a little bit more flowy for Lynette. So I'm gonna take my time. I also decided to sketch out the pose a little bit more loosely, a little bit lighter, just because I can kind of plan it out before we actually do any final lines or do any darkening and thickening of certain things that will make the piece look a little bit more finished compared to my sketchy lines that you can see here. Um, in terms of like approach, I definitely feel like my lack of confidence in my lines and the lack of having the ability to have pen pressure definitely kind of made me work in a different kind of way, which you guys will see in a little bit that I feel like it transfers a little bit better into this character the next one. I'm gonna skip the one after, like the second last one, and then the last one I feel like kind of worked out as well. Because like I said, I've been trying my best to learn how to do a little bit more inking traditionally because I feel like that's where I'm really lacking as well. Like traditionally and just line quality in general, I feel like that confidence kind of just hinders a little bit from the things I want to do in terms of uh, different artwork. So I wanted to kind of play around with the idea of treating this more like of a kind of like ink drawing. So I am utilizing the thicker kind of pen brush that they do have. So they have like a regular and a, then a kind of wider or thicker brush. And I'm basically filling in some of the values in a more sketchy way. But I do like, I kind of wanted to have some areas that felt a little bit more of like a solid black, which is why I wanted to go with the thicker kind of pen brush rather than doing the thinner kind of scratchier, scratchier brush that I was using earlier. So for the colors, similar to Sheng Ling, I wanted to limit it to probably two colors. So I kind of chose this yellowy peachy color for her hair, even though her hair color is not this color, but I feel like it fit a little bit better with kind of like the, the hue and the value was the closest thing that I could get that could be her hair color. There's nothing that was too kind of like a muted blonde color or something that's a little bit more gray compared to this. And then I paired it up with that similar kind of teal turquoise color that I believe I used for Goro as well. But like I said, the kind of like two tone color palette, I feel like works the best. I did uh, went ahead and colored her eyes this color as well. Her eyes are more of like a purpley blue, but because I'm kind of keeping my warms and my cools kind of separate in this case, I feel like this word kind of works out the best. So Lynette is finished, so we are going to go ahead and choose our next character, which is Kokomi. So Kokomi is another character that I feel like I've drawn a lot, but I'm trying to stick to whatever the wheel is giving me. I did do this throughout several hours throughout the day, so I do apologize that um, my wheel probably seems inconsistent. It's just because whenever I use my phone, I have a habit of clearing out all my apps. And whenever you clear out your app, it kind of closes your, like your previously open apps, right? So it doesn't save what I had previously, but I did make sure to try to screenshot when I could, uh, just in case if I accidentally forgot who I had or if I lost the footage. So 
we are working on Kokomi. So I went ahead and zoomed into kind of Lynette's little face marking. So right now for Kokomi's sketch, I'm keeping the pose quite simple, but I feel like it could be flowy and very cute. Her eyes are also very simple. There's no need for like pupils and I'm going to be going to be kind of playing around with the colors a little bit because my carrot agenda is very much uh, very apparent whenever I draw Kokomi because she's very much a lot of I guess you could argue it's more pink and purple but it's kind of like pink and blue to me so I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing around more or less with her color palette so Kokomi is a little bit easier for me to draw um, probably because like I draw kind of drawn her a lot just whenever she was released till now, I've sketched her just a whole bunch. Traditionally, I've drawn her digitally. I've done a watercolor piece. I've done alcohol marker pieces, pencil sketches, just a whole bunch of different uh, sessions of just me drawing Coco Me. Cause I do find her designs just super cute. It's very elegant. Obviously I'm in love with the colors. So I, I definitely love Coco Me as like one of my favorite Genshin characters probably. So. Uh, yeah, Pose is kind of just like her floaty-ish. I was thinking of making her look a little startled, but I feel like this fits her a little bit better. I also included a few fishies into the foreground, and I feel like even though I'll end up adding quite a bit of color to each of these uh, sketches, when you zoom out from when like wherever the area is that I'm drawing in for the new character, it's actually not very noticeable. And I think it depends where you're placing your character. I'm tending kind of to place the character in kind of like scribbly areas. So they don't feel like they're impeding too much with a place that maybe has to have a little bit more white or I needed to have like more of a pure color. And because all of these are quite sketchy, I can kind of get away with the fact that these kind of like super tiny drawings in these areas just don't become too visible when I zoom out. Okay, so uh, for the colors, like I said, it's kind of a little bit easier for me to choose her colors. I did stick more or less with the two colors of like kind of a very soft pink and kind of a mid-tone blue. I decided to not make both of the colors super light. Um, I did want to have a little bit of contrast just because Kokomi's outfit other than... Actually, I think majority of her outfit other than like the white areas, they are pretty much more of a darker purpley blue and her sleeves go almost go into like a deeper kind of like navy color. So I definitely wanted to have a little bit of contrast between the pink and the blue color. I went ahead and switched, like kind of switched my brushes to the regular kind of pen brush to do the gradation for her hair, just because it looks a little bit softer this way rather than chunking it in with that bigger kind of highlighter brush. And I think that's pretty much it for Coco Me though. So for the next character, I am going to be zooming into her vision. And you can see I was kind of choosing another place that kind of had a more like scribbly-ish kind of area so that we can kind of hide the character very easily. So the next character we have is Dea. So for Dea, I did struggle quite a bit. Um, cooler characters or characters that just are a little bit more... I don't know, just a little less cute and they're more cool, they're very beautiful, any of those I do struggle a little bit with. And for the pose, it was a little bit weird because I kind of kept switching things up and I did cut that out so you guys probably won't see it. But even when I was like planning out the body, I didn't really take in consideration how high up her head was or where I placed her head. So her neck feels a little long, it also feels a little thick. Um, but for the most part, I don't think the sketch turned out too bad. I think the part that I disliked the most for Dea's piece was the color choices and how I blocked them in. So it's not going to be like the whole thing, but there are parts that I really dislike. And you'll see in a bit once we start to color in and block in the different colors for both her skin tone, her her hands, her kind of outfit kind of and her hair I guess I don't know why my brain feels like it's going so fast and I'm speaking so slow but yeah uh, I'm at that kind of state and it's that time of the week where it's like my brain feels like it's kind of dead so hmm, I do apologize you guys have to bear with my voiceovers like this so for Dea I kind of wish I spent more time 
sketching her rather than the color blocking. So there were some areas I feel like I could have kind of spruced up and fixed. I don't think I've also darkened that other eyebrow so it looks a little sparse. I also tried to make sure that I was adding kind of more solid filled areas for a little bit more contrast because I was gonna kind of plan a little bit more of a higher contrast lighting like kind of more a brighter highlight I guess so I wanted to paint in her hair to be a little bit more stark and dark and then I was also making some of the areas that were kind of more of a dark gray to be more black and then you can see some areas like this I don't mind I think it actually looks kind of pretty and the part that I dislike the most is that I will use the same orange to kind of chunk in a huge shadow for her face which I feel like felt too out of place and it might be because I didn't have enough contrast or the colors were a little bit too mid-tony that it didn't feel too right. I feel like you can never really go wrong with using black and pastels. I feel like there's always enough contrast and it looks kind of nice but this is where I was getting into the weird territory of trying to match too many colors I think. So the colors for I think a lot of the yellow, there's some oranges and I used it for her skin. It kind of melded into one place but I've left some areas let's say the blue of her eyes and the red to be separate colors which I felt like I probably should have just used a different color for her skin tone so that it matched a little bit more appropriately we'll just move on so going straight into her eye we are going to draw my last character for today's session uh, which is child or tertalia so I kind of wanted to do a more dynamic pose like I did for I think not, not exactly dynamic for like Kokomi or Lynette, but they are a little bit less just like standing still facing forward kind of pose, if that makes sense. But you guys can let me know if you guys want me to do another session or maybe do this for a future stream or something where we can just go on for a long time of doing just a bunch of drawings and zooming in and out from the different sections because that could be very fun just because for each of these characters, I think I spent probably 20 to 30 minutes on each because I didn't want to spend too too long and I wanted to get through at least a few characters for this kind of concept to make sense. So for a child, I haven't drawn him in a while so it kind of felt nice to draw him just because I do enjoy his character. I do like his outfit and his hair is kind of fun to draw as well and his color scheme is kind of it's kind of nice if you add in a lot of the blue colors as well because it's kind of like orange and blue and gray and it kind of matches uh nicely but um i don't know if it resembles him too much here i definitely gave him more of a rounder more squat looking face compared to probably what he looks like but i feel like his kind of fun demeanor ish kind of works out here i do like the pose for the most part i kind of wish i blocked in the rest of his body and maybe threw in a leg or two or at least having his knee kind of bent upward so that you could see that he's kind of lunging forward rather than this kind of one hand one shoulder and the head kind of only being in view but for the most part, I had a lot of fun sketching him and I wanted a little bit of redemption for the lighting that I did for Dea, but I'm doing it for child. So I kind of did the same thing for the skin tone, um, but I definitely chose colors that are a little bit more fitting for each area rather than kind of like for Dea's, I felt like I was kind of fighting whether or not I was going to choose maybe like two colors versus like wanting to match all the colors to be correct, which felt like the orange dominated the entire piece a little bit too much and it didn't really make sense. If that, oh, I, don't, I don't even know if I'm talking correctly at this point. It's like 3 a.m. My sleep schedule is like entirely screwed up right now, uh, which is why I'm still up doing this video, but you know, that's okay. Um, for child, I also decided to throw in his little water blade sword thing that he has and it'll just help me add a little bit more color and you guys will be able to see that the blue that I'm going to place afterwards right here won't really show up in Dea's piece too much 
because I don't think I would have added this much blue if I knew it was going to show up in Dea's uh, piece, especially because I think we zoomed in into her eye, so it will be a little bit too jarring. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's session, and we'll kind of do a quick run through of everything. So Shengling, um, her hair clip, we have Goro, and then into Goro's eye, we have Kali which is, looks like she's on fire. And then inside the brim of Klee's hat, we have Lynette right here. I think this one's my favorite. But then after Lynette, we zoom into her face marking of the star. We kind of have Coco Me, which is super cute too. Probably my second favorite. And then we zoom into Coco Me's vision. And inside Coco Me's vision, we have Dea. And then after Dea, if we zoom into, I believe it's her eye. Yes, it's her eye. And then we have child up here. And that's basically it for today's video. If you guys want me to do this again for another video, let me know. And I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye.